Good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to show you how to breed Rose of Sharon's. Back in the day, I bought like a, it was almost actually true blue, a Rose of Sharon from some garden center, or whatever, and I planted it and I liked it. Uh, and then I decided to experiment by breeding it with other ones. I found a few specimens I liked, ripped the flowers off, and basically fertilized my Blue Rose of Sharon. So I did that for four generations and ended up with this. So they're like pure white flowers, no red mark. Here's a better example. Flowers are like kind of small, they're single, single bloom. Um, but this guy seems to suffer a little bit from chlorosis and something has been attacking it every year since I've had it here. I brought this with us from our old house. Some sort of bug has been eating it. I haven't been able to catch it to see what it is yet. But uh, this house came with a few rows of Sharon's. A lot of them we cut down because they're the ones that drop their seeds and they pop up everywhere. This white one does not. And the original blue one that I bred it from does not. So it will drop seeds and they just don't seem to germinate. So we had this guy pop up this year. Uh, it's like four feet tall already. But I notice nice dark green foliage. The shape of the plant is nice. Um, it gets attacked by something, but it's much more hardy and resistant. So I would like to breed my white one over there with this one. Now, for a Rose of Sharon, actually you can see better on this one, you can see all that stuff. This end piece is the female, female organ, the stigma. And then back behind it are the anthers. So those are covered in the male part, the pollen. So what you want to do is I'm going to take this flower and I'm going to rub the anthers on the end tip. And you want to try and pick a flower that has just opened that day, which this one is going to open today. So I'm going to open it myself and rub all the pollen and the stigma inside there. Basically, I have peeled all the petals back very carefully not letting them touch the stigma tip on the end here and you can even rip them off it doesn't matter and now what I'm gonna do is rub this anther on the tip there okay like, I'm just gonna rip those off there we go so the petals don't matter they're there they're just there to attract the pollinators to come and do this for them but now what I'm going to do is take this flower and just rub it on the tip just the tip all right done so the last thing I do is I mark it so there's a tiny little stem here I'm just gonna tie this ribbon on it <coughs> there we go so now in the fall once all of the buds and everything have dried out, uh, I don't know if you've seen what Rose of Sharon seed pods look like, but they kind of turn into these little pods and then in the late fall, they'll dry out. And then once they crack open on their own, that's when you can take the seeds and you can plant them right away and start growing them right away. They don't need um, stratification or a cold period or anything like that. You can just start them. Um, now, the one thing I will say is the reason you want to get the flower the day it opens is because these can pollinate themselves. So like the pollen that's right here behind the stigma can pollinate it. Or like if a bee comes in here, it might pollinate itself by mixing the pollen with the stigmas. That's kind of why the stigmas are out a little bit further because it's just like a slightly better chance of not pollinating itself. And it's also the first place that uh, like a bee with pollen on it will come in and touch. 
but anyway, that's it. It's super simple. Um, you just mix for traits you're looking for and hope for the best. Uh, now when I get seeds from this, I'll grow them all and then I will breed those ones back to the white one again because I want to get white but a little more healthy and hardier and pest resistant. So wish me luck. It's fun. You just need patience. So actually before I go, I just want to show you, I went and grabbed another flower and you can actually, well, besides the ant, you can see there's actually a lot of pollen on this one. So I'm just going to go refertilize it again with this one. I think that last one I had was a bit of a mutant and not quite mature. Oh yeah, much better. There you go. Ew, it's kind of goopy. Ta-da! Now they're going to make babies.